Hi, and welcome to an impromptu Diablo 4 podcast where we'll be, well, talking about Diablo 4 and uh, probably some other ARPGs as well. Joining me here today is Datmos, Sakisha, and Nugi. And uh, since not everybody will know everyone, Datmos, tell us a little bit about who are you? I am Florida man. Now, I just, uh, I don't know, I've been streaming for like 12 years and uh, I play action ARPGs and MMOs. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Nugi? Uh, basically the same, just Danish instead. Less beard, more neck. <laughs> basically the Florida of actually, Europe. Actually, yeah. I actually started out in D3 with mods back in the day. We used to, uh, mm-hmm. you know, do things. Oh, 11 game. years ago, huh? Yeah, it was a while back. Yeah. Did you start before then? Uh, yeah, playing Skyrim. Oh, shit. Shirtless. <laughs> Oh, these boomer streamers. I started in 2015. <laughs> um, Sakisha, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I play I play all the things. I play all the things. I originally taken a dive back into, you know, Path of Exile because I gave it like hung it up for like five years because uh, the computer I was on would just like the power supply would just turn off the computer and I lost like every hardcore character. So I just hung it up for a really long time. But every time I was going to come back, it was just like, uh, really daunting. You just have to take that first step, really, I think, for like any RPG, pretty much. Yeah, it can be very overwhelming for sure. Um, and something I really love about Sakisha, he plays like every game on the hardest difficulty. I just want to add that in there. It's very cool to watch. Um, but yeah, I'm Zizarin. I play mostly PoE, but pretty much every ARPG. And uh, that's perfect because we've all been playing D4 this past weekend. And if we would start off talking about the launch, um, were you guys surprised, uh, like that there were queue issues? If anything, I was kind of surprised that it, that we had a queue. I was expecting a big error, a D3 repeat. <laughs> right. I think they, they got it online pretty quickly. It felt like, yeah. Like, I, like, I think Saturday and Sunday, I didn't have any queuing issues like at all. It was, it was very funny to me because obviously I played on EU and the queues were different per realm. And what was a really fun experience for me, I, I saw in one of my videos that I got up early that uh, people were accusing me of streamer queue because I got in so fast. I disconnected, I got right back in, but they had a two hour queue. And I was replying to someone on YouTube and I realized, oh, it's just because it's a different queue for America. And I realized it was all because of the KFC promotion. Oh because, yeah, for sure. So basically it's such, such a fun and amusing stereotype too, you know, fat Americans. It was so funny that you guys got fucked over by KFC at launch. That was just a <laughs> uh, KFC kill. was just too funny for me. Yeah, for sure, dude. <sighs> did did any of you actually try the double down or any of the sandwiches that gave you beta access? No, this no, this year. But yeah, you can't uh, get it. Yeah, I ordered both of them to do a taste test because I haven't had KFC in like ten years. How was um, it, bro? The double down just put me down. I was. I was I was in pain for a while at the thing. I couldn't even finish it all. It was so much chicken. It was just like a whole bunch of mayo. There was no cheese. The oh, bacon, yeah. it was so thin you could actually see through it. You like held it up and you're like, what is this? And it was like rubbery. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there was like the, a spicy chicken sandwich that you could get also. And that, that was actually decent. I ate that. But oh. yeah, no, the double down. Yeah, to put no, put me down. Apparently, I've been <laughs> free for months and I still can't get that damn barbecue stain out of the microwave. Close the mind for oh, no, not to put Wait, the sauce. I hear something. Oh, sorry. Is it? <laughs> it might pipe. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, that was a, a, a Joe Biden TTS. Yeah, yeah. My bad, dude. Uh, All so, over the <laughs> <laughs> so, Sikisha, how was your launch experience like with with NA? Was the queue? Well, yeah, how much did you get to play on day one? Uh, I got disconnected a couple times, which kind of sucked. But uh, yeah, other than that, like it it wasn't that bad. I, uh, w- once like got in, you know, like it was it was fine. There's a little rubber banding at some points, but other than that, it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. What about you, Dumbbells? Yeah, no, same thing. I think I went through two 80 minute queues, one 30 minute queue, and one 110 minute queue. Like I disconnected four times, but then going in the evening time, it was like smooth sailing for me. I just stayed connected the entire time. 
So yep. yeah, the original launch stuff, it was rough. And he just stared at the loading screen the entire time and just did React Andy stuff. But yeah, after that, pretty much new sailing though. I'm I'm yeah, sitting no, here thinking laughs too. laughs in Europe, but I don't think Nugi had a much better time no. of it, even though he was in Europe. I, my experience was pretty much like that month, honestly, even though I was in Europe. I so I didn't have like proper authentication on my account, and I think it was trying to authenticate with my mobile or something, and it was waiting for it to time out. Because I actually, you know, when it comes up with the authenticating window, uh, I waited there for like half an hour once, and I know, I know, you went through it and like instantly, because people were telling me. So I'm like, I don't know. There's there's something going on there. I don't know what it was, but I expected it could have like kept going on like for a long line, like for a lot longer, but it was only like for the first night, so that was good. Yeah, and what I really appreciated, like I said, I was expecting an error. It was really nice that the queue started very fast, and you could actually queue. You saw the number going down. Yeah, so many queues can be really frustrating when it's just like <laughs> an hour, and it just keeps saying an hour, and you're like. Am I in queue? Like, is this working? <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, was it completely gone for NA on day two as well? Yeah, it was completely gone. Talking about errors, so did you guys have any hard crash errors? Where no. it was like, uh, no? No. No. I have memory leak. Well, memory leaks, I think. I mean, I, I think there was a memory leak at least because, I don't know. It, everything stalled out and I tried to close the game and my PC almost blue screened like yeah. everything all my sound stopped i couldn't move my mouse all my monitors rose for like a minute and then they all came back wow. yeah yeah I had like one hard crash but yeah once i did that texture thing where you set it from high to medium yeah. it didn't happen again but i have like a bunch of memory so i don't know if you guys also had that issue with the hard crashes yeah, no. yeah i didn't, didn't have the crashes i have 64 yeah. gigs of memory as well maybe that helps I do wow, too. That's, a, that's right. a lot. I have a double that, 128. <laughs> Maybe I do. I actually can't remember now. <laughs> oh, I'm so curious. What do I have? What do I even see? Oh, no, I do have 64. 128. That's crazy. Do you really? Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. Oh, no, I want that. You know what they say? Everything's bigger in America. Bro, does, wait, does that mean yep. you can use like a browser and have like 200 tabs open and you're fine? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> why not? I mean, that's it's the main so reason to have it, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I just keep a bunch of tabs open. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's good, especially for a streamer. Like, if you never restart your PC, I, I never do. Um, But yeah, no, it was it was pretty good. And they, they ended up extending... How much did they expend the, extend the beta with? Half a day or a day? I think like a full day. It was like 7 p.m. on Monday it ended, and I would imagine that would have been Sunday otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, because it ended, like, was it 1 or 2 p.m., I think, on Monday? So it must have yeah. been, like, another yeah. several hours. Yeah, I remember there was so much confusion because like, their website that said the world boss was spawning at a certain time, one of the timers, like, restarted. So it said, like, world boss spawning four hours. So loads of people were, like, spam leveling to get back up in time, but I don't think there was a world boss. But, yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit first about like the leveling and first impressions on leveling and just being a low level character. So Keisha, what did you try first and what was your experience on like early game Diablo? Um, I think, uh, I don't know. I, I had a, I had a fun time. I had a fun time doing it. The leveling was like relatively easy. There was a couple mob areas or things that were kind of obviously a little bit more dangerous than others. Like, like, uh, getting frozen and then like the overhead, Stunlock from like the big goat dudes was probably one of the most lethal things that I would that I was running into. But luckily, I uh, I don't know. I didn't I didn't have. Yeah, it was that or the butcher. I the first time I uh, got to the butcher, I escaped just barely in time. Like I had a ledge that I could climb up, and then he despawned. I somehow didn't meet the butcher in like thirty hours, twenty six hours. I'm not you sure. Didn't? Wow. Uh, once I saw him, I saw him numerous times. Apparently, he dropped. He was the only one that dropped a uh, unique. Like the butcher's cleaver or something like that. So yeah, yeah. there were apparently yeah. somebody said there were three uniques in the beta, but the only one I heard people actually got was the butcher's cleaver. Um, mm -hmm. They were apparently quite rare too, and yeah. I don't know what the, like the lowest level the butcher could spawn at, but somebody in my chat said they got him at level seven, and they just got like <laughs> bonked. I don't know if that's yeah. true, but you know, 
Uh, it's what, true. What? <laughs> can, can, can confirm. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> what was, was your first... <laughs> What was your first character, Sukisha? Uh, just I just played the Barb the whole time. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Oh so man, you're, you're, main. you're gonna. I was have just to... trying to like see how far I could push like you know the equipment and the gear because I, I I wanted to be ready for on hardcore. I want to be ready for the world boss. Because the first time it spawned, I was like offline, you know, because I stayed up like long the previous night. The second time I came out there, um, or actually the only time I got to it, I think it was the third world boss spawn. And everyone from hardcore had already fucking died. So there's only four people out there. I had like full poison resist, or I think the soft cap and, uh, and you know, everything else and the scroll of escape, hotbound and all that. And there was only like four people out there. Uh, I was in there fighting them a pretty good bit. I soaked a couple of the hits. I think once you get over a certain amount of poison resist, that dot doesn't like affect you. Yeah. Like, like, I was seeing it on everybody else. I like, was just a dot or something. I don't know. Yeah, we had a very different experience because on my road, first off, I didn't know it had poison. So I went in with no elixir, no poison res. And obviously the rogue, I don't think, did it even have like a damage reduction move? If so, I didn't have it. I hadn't taken it. So the first swipe the boss did on me, my health bar just like, plunk, gone. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm dead now. You should just use the dodge build next time, sis. Yeah, I had none of that. Do you, do you know about the mortal dodge build with the ring synergy and poison imbuement? No, I didn't. I didn't you actually that. won't take it. Yeah, it's bugged. So you, it, oh. it says like if you have a poison application to a mob, you get like 8% dodge, but it actually counts every single application. So you become 100% unable to be hit <laughs> if you just use poison imbuement and nothing to damage you. Well, you, got, you got to make sure to keep up your poison, right. uh, yeah, your poison on the boss. That's yeah, immortal, funny. immortal, funny. hardcore build, unkillable. Well, probably not now. Now they've said it. Sorry, I don't know if they're gonna bug squash it this weekend. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not expecting. I don't. Do you think they'll do a patch between the weekends at all? Besides just adding the classes. Uh, they no said, idea. They said yesterday that they did some bug fixes, but oh. they didn't do like Path of Exile style where they list like 10,000 words of what they fixed. They just right. said bug fixes. So who really knows? That's yeah. fair. I'm so excited yeah. that Sakisha only played Barb because he'll have such a unique perspective on the game. Like, that's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone else played like everything. And yeah, I don't know. And and you actually your... managed to kill the butcher on Barb, which some some people in my chat was saying that's impossible. People can't do that. And I'm like, mm. yeah, no, no, I, yeah, no, I, I soloed him like twice, I think, and then like three three of the other times. Actually, one of the times we found him, it was my myself and uh, Anthony. Uh, he was playing on his on his rogue. Uh, we actually had a loot goblin and the butcher with like five yeah. like elites there. It was it was pretty wild, but obviously we prioritized the uh, the goblin. Uh, most of the loot off the goblin didn't really seem that great, but you know, it was just it was just like any other any other rare. Just your yeah. you know, yeah. I didn't get much of the loot goblin either. I only found two. I found two in the first four hours, and then didn't see one since. And everyone kept saying like, "Oh, I got like two or three legendaries off the loot goblins." So I was like, "I got none. I got two rares." But okay, uh, so they they were like, "I didn't have a good experience with that." But what was fun with like Barb for people in my chat was that people started out playing Barb and then would try Sork after and they're like, wow, <laughs> what a different experience. Pretty, pretty big difference, I think. Like yeah. the clear speed for, for Sork and, and Rogue just completely dumpsters like the, the Barb for the most part, unless you've got really insane gear and or at least at 25, right? But I, I still, even the, knowing that, I really enjoyed playing the Barb because I felt like if I ran into something crazy, I could just face tank it and... And if shit hit the fan, I could just scroll of escape out of there, which I, I only had to use once in a boss fight. Yeah, I, I think the really big difference, at least in my opinion, was between all the classes, it felt like at least at level 25, Sorch just has everything. It has the defensive moves, it has the CC, it has the AoE, it has the single target. Whereas like both Barb and Rogue didn't really feel like it had everything at that level. That much. Right. End up feeling late Rogue game now. Nice yeah, for sure. Um, but Damans, what did you start out with? Uh, I started out as Rogue, but then oh. eventually I just uh, wanted to play everything, so I did Rogue, Sork, and then I did Hardcore Barbarian too. Nice. So, 
Yeah, overall it was pretty fun though, but I kind of cheated a little bit because I had access to uh, the media beta, so I actually played the low level content before. So yeah, it was oh. pretty smooth sailing. So I already like kind of knew what to do. Right, right. Yeah. And did you mostly play stuff core or, or and just the one character hardcore? Uh, yeah, the first two days when the server issues and disconnect stuff was going on, I mostly <laughs> played softcore, and then once the servers got better, I started playing some hardcore on the barbarian. Yeah. And Nugi, what about you? Uh, I started with a rogue three times. So I got to level <laughs> seven on the... <laughs> Wait, three times? <laughs> so I got to level seven on the first one. Melee rogue. It was going all right. Um, but obviously you play on Torment 2 and you push a little bit too fast. So I, I, I get like a big elite pack. It was, it was tough. It was a tough pack. It had all the affixes and everything. Like I was getting walled in. I try and walk back, and then from the other side, Butcher comes along. Yeah. So I tried yep. to run all the way out of the instance, but he hooked me back and killed me. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> Just when you At think you're point, out. It's so long. It's like two screens. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's super, super long. Uh, I tried Rogue as a bow right after. Uh, got to the spider boss, um, and basically it ended up like... The more damage you do to her, the more things she starts doing, and she starts chasing you and more and more ads. And I just I couldn't keep up with the ads, and there was not enough health potion spawning because I wasn't doing enough damage. So I just kind of like it was like a fifty minute fight, and it was just like a war of attrition to the point where I just died in the end because she would just hit like I would literally get a hit for like five percent of my life with poison, like every five seconds, and I just couldn't do anything about it eventually. So that's how. Yeah. I'm. Yeah, you know when you make a ZDPS build, you're supposed to build your yeah. toughness. Nuji, you're not supposed to have no toughness and no damage. I mean, I didn't think the boss would be that hard. I had like a blue bow. It was, I thought, you know, ARPG veteran here will do <laughs> fine, but no. Uh, and then I uh, played the next rogue, uh, where I found a good build with the uh, you stab the things in and you dash through and you pull the daggers out. Right, that skill oh, is yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, and I got to twenty five on that. That was that was a good time. It's like splitting steel, but good. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, my experience was I started out with a Sork, and I felt like nothing was challenging. I think I had maybe one close call on my Sork, and that I think was before I had, like, the Ice Barrier block. And then I was, I'm pretty sure I was level 19. I saw the level 25 Stronghold, and I was like, oof, six levels above? That sounds sick. And I'm on hardcore, <laughs> which, by the way, in hindsight, I actually regret playing hardcore just because I'm so used to playing hardcore for my own enjoyment. But you get to test a lot more. I also heard some people were getting kicked out after they died on hardcore. So it's super hardcore. You die and then two hour queue. Um, but uh, yeah, I saw this stronghold and I started fighting them. So I was like, this is really hard. This is a really cool difficulty for a change because now I'm not one hitting the monsters anymore and they're actually doing damage. So I'm fighting through this stronghold, and I'm like, man, am I going to get my shit kicked in by the boss here now? Because he's six levels higher than me. Uh, right. I go in, and it's the, the one that does, like, the, the barrage attack with, uh, yeah, just absolutely. Was it the frozen one? The eastern one you're in? The frozen one? Uh, no, it was all the way west, northwest, with, like, the, um, it was, like, oh. the blood things. Oh, he's got the oh, blood or... like machine gun, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. the blood machine gun. That just annihilated me at six levels under, yeah. and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, I, and I realized I wanted to leave combat, but I had no scroll of escape. And I was like, I can't get out. It's me or him. And <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'd i also recently switched my hotkeys. Oh, sorry. So I, I pressed Ice Nova or something instead of my barrier, and I died. I made a new rogue, leveled up to 24, um, and, and got the boss. I got up to the boss. I got one shot by the boss, like the world boss. And I was like, oh, my God, yeah. I'm regretting hardcore oh, so no. much right oh. now. <laughs> and then <clears throat> I'm like, OK, should I make softcore? I make a softcore barb player around that a little bit, Thorns, because I'd, I'd heard so many people in chat said softcore was just better for barb because it was, you know, unless you go Thorns, unless you do certain things, it's very rippy. So it's harder to test. So I was like, OK, I'll yeah. play softcore. I, I had an OK time with that. Made one last hardcore sork. I get to level 25, and people tell me, I think Noogie and Steel on a walk tells me about this level 30, 35 boss that they were farming for higher level gear. And I'm like, cool. So I go farm it. I kill it. No one 
ever had mentioned the on death effect and I had a blizzard <laughs> on the corpse so I couldn't see it until like 0. 0.2 seconds before go. so I've, I hit level 25 and I insta die and I'm like alright let's find something else to do I'm like I'm so sad literally like like 10 minutes after I hit max level I was oh, I was so sad Dude, we were out on? here oh sorry you guys go ahead oh no you go ahead first I was going to say, we were out there farming that guy, and uh, we were out there, yeah, we were out there farming it, and in, like, the hour or two hours that we were there, there had to have been at least, like, four or five people that came in and all died to the one-shot effect at the end. Like, it was crazy, like, how many people were, like, level 25 hardcore characters ripping left and right. I remember there was one guy, you know, because the loot would fall on the ground, and then there was the delay uh, before the, you know, the fire enchanted explosion or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> or one dude, he's just standing. The the spirits just standing there, and he's like, "Bruh." <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was really funny. It just really kind of sad too, because you don't have the opportunity when like it spawns, you can't like go into local and be like, "Hey, bro, watch out for the you know," because like the bosses are. It's hard, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I might I might have been a little bit mean here, but so that explosion, it does he does cast it when he's just running around normally, like the big explosion. Yeah. So this is the one time where it's really fun to play Barb. Because Barb has a kick. You kick him into it? Yeah. yeah. So you oh. can kick it into people? <laughs> That's so <laughs> mean. <laughs> Yo, you're PKing people? I oh, tried. No. I tried to save someone at one point and he died. I didn't manage uh -huh. to PK anyone. That's so toxic. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really funny what? because like, I noticed other enemies in the game when they had on death effects, like, their body would blow up. Like They would go bigger. And with this boss, well, his corpse disintegrated when I killed him. So I, there wasn't like that much of an indication of on death effect, and then my blizzard was everywhere, so I was like, couldn't see. So. I've, I've actually I, I saw it on one other mob. The only other one that I saw was a was also like I guess kind of like fire enchanted. I guess I don't know if that's exactly what they call it, but one other mob that had the 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 like swirling fire underneath their feet, and they had the same delayed explosion effect. Oh, but obviously, like you know, the explosion if it's based off of their health, like I think it was back in the day. Uh, you know, it wasn't enough to kill you, but that guy has a lot of health. So obviously it's probably one shot, even if, you know, max res resist or whatever. Um, but one of the other things, like, I think it's really cool about Diablo 4 with the whole open world thing. It's kind of like, to me, it's kind of like Elden Ring was to Dark Souls. You know, they added that open world bit where you're kind of like meshing into other people's worlds. But seeing people die, like their hardcore characters die in open world, just random fucking people is like a really unique experience. Oh, I love it. I don't know. It was really exciting to see that because it's just it's just emotionally charged. You know that person's back to the fucking main menu. It sucks, man. Yeah, people are getting super trolly. When I was playing hardcore at that level thirty five boss view, they had learned about the leashing and you know about the server sharding because people were you know putting their teleports up that ramp uh, in a safe spot, then they were running <laughs> down to the spawn, right, and then they were going back and forth trying to get a different instance. And then people, what they started doing on at least on the NA server that I were playing on, they were leashing the mob up the ramp. So, and every single time people were coming back and forth, they would just instantly die. So people just kept them moving their portals farther and farther and closer to the stronghold. But I think that's uh, I don't know. That could kind of be abused later on. It's kind of like if you're playing hardcore, it's kind of dumb that you might be safe. And then when you come back through your portal, you're put into a new instance and you don't know what effects are going to be going off. But That's... I mean, isn't that a bit like your choice? Whether or not, because if you're, if you're porting in it, because what, why are you porting to town? Like most people were porting to town to get a different shard, right? To reset the bus. Or so the, you're, you're oh, trying you're here. or the vendor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. guess, but you can always just walk out or go to it. Like there's, there was a, there was a. No, you're playing hardcore. It's your choice. The way the world works, and with everyone, like with things just happening, and you can spot. Obviously, we should have like uh, what's it called? Immunity. When yeah. We, when we, yeah. Yeah. Like that have should like a be a thing. Period. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, like a little twenty, like a path of exile grace period. Just stay in there for a little while. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that could, that's yeah, that, that's kind of trolly though for hardcore. Like, if when the game's coming up, because we don't know what's going to be out in the later levels, right? And if you tell we're back to t town and sell, and you come back right. and randomly there's just like people leash mobs on you, or even they're just in a different instance right. and they're fighting on top of you, and you come in, there's just explosion, they're debuffs, right? <laughs> then you just die. That's kind of silly. That's a bad way to go. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you, you never want to feel like you were cheated. Yeah. And like, I think, so the main confirmation we have for this so far is that mods talked to the community manager and he said, if you die in PVP on hardcore, you lose your character. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I really- asked about that. In PVP? Yeah. Oh, so you do? Uh, apparently. Originally like in the pvp specific like the thing we need to farm yes the pvp specific zone yeah right I asked because everyone is saying that you don't die right it's like it's not actually permadeath when you pvp in hardcore so i asked the community manager if it's true or what 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 their final decision was and they said if you pvp on hardcore you lose your character forever oh wow okay but See, the rich, originally early on i guess they said it wasn't going to be permadeath it's going to be like an exclusion zone Right. So it's almost like Diablo 2 dueling, right? It's permadeath bracket dueling. In the, to, to be the fair, tower. if they didn't, there would be so much griefing with trying to get people low right next to a monster and trying to get the monster right. to one hit them anyway. And you think there's going to be less griefing? No, now it'll just well, be by fighting. Having it, by having no, it now it'll just be fighting. Yeah, but like, there's, I mean, surely. At least now you're expecting to die. Yeah, but like, I don't know, like people will figure out ways to like group up and like, you know, do things that are like, I don't know, it, it, because the thing is, you have to go out there to farm. So I don't know if it's going to feel that you're being griefed more or less when you're forced out there and if things aren't probably balanced. If you think about it, I'm scared because if it's, it's like a core part of the game. No, I'm excited for the potential of what it could be. But when you think about the reality of how PvP is in games and how people exploit it and how very soon it can be completely like a wasteland and there's like this one group that just sits there and camps it all day and nobody else has to get gets to, to do it. It is right. double opt-in as well, though. You have to go to the zone and then you have to flag yourself. Okay, that's good. I think no, that's bad. I, I, I think if you're in the zone, you should be flagged. But Right, right. I, I think an important question too is like, are people going to drop their loot? Because when I saw hardcore people drop, mm. maybe because I wasn't in their party. Actually, wait, hold on. I think I've seen people that did die in the party and they didn't drop their equipped loot. So is that something that they're going to implement only if you have a PvP flag that you drop, like your your equipment and your inventory or what? I don't know. I don't really know. Because that would be an incentive for people to, you know. Do I would love skills. that. Like that was really cool in D2 PvP to do like full loot duels where you were like both selected, like, yes, you can loot me if you kill me, and then you PvP. That was so right. sick. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I, I know there's a lot of things like people are like, oh, are they going to do this? They're going to do that? They're going to change it. Like, I mean, honestly, if this game's coming out on console too, they're probably getting really close to just locking everything in for, you know, certification for consoles. And I mean, I, I know not everybody, it's a different age where we don't just have the physical disc and, you know, the, everything's on mm -hmm. there because it's updated online or whatever. But still, they still have to go through all that. All, they, they really can't change it that much. <laughs> they might be able to do like a day one, like, you know, like, a, you know, hot fix for bugs and stuff. But I think most of the features, like what we've seen so far is probably what's going to be in the game. Obviously, uh, uh, aside from the content we haven't seen yet. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. That's one of I just realized most of the gear isn't going to be tradable, right? It, anyway, so they probably like probably won't have full loot that way because I think well, probably not. a lot of it was tradable this week. Yeah, Le I think that's weekend. for testing. You could trade though. rares, you could trade legendaries. You're you're able to trade pretty much everything as long as you're in a group of somebody want to drop. Hmm. Right. Was, yeah, I, I think when you couldn't trade it if you there's like if you started crafting on it, like modifying it, it would make it uh, many of the things would make it a countdown. I think. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I really yeah. hope, but, regardless though of the PvP, that we can in some way set up like PvP tournaments and stuff like that. That'd be so fun. And oh, yeah. then you could even have like a low level PvP tournament, right? So that you don't have to invest like full time to get a max level character. Like, you know, Sakisha's level 30 PvP tournament, etc. That'd be so sick. Did you ever do old style D2 bracket dueling on hardcore back in the days? I don't think I did bracket dueling, but I did a lot of oh, PvP. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they used to have tournaments on certain forums and they would have like little prizes where you could win like currency and stuff, like bracket dueling competition. They're actually really fun. Cool. Yeah, That's so maybe that will come back. Yeah. Also, did I want. They... Oh, sorry, God. No, I was just going to ask Did Diablo 3 have PvP on launch? I don't think it did. Didn't they patch it no. later? I think I quit the game no. by the time they put PvP Never got it, ever. No, they put it in. Never. They did put it in. I remember okay. testing it. Yeah, I tested it originally with 
King Kongor, Moldrin, and Archon the Wizard. And it was just a one-shot fiesta. It was so bad. There was no balance. You just it was like whoever hit the other person first won. <laughs> it, was not, it was it was a joke. It was so bad. I think people like played like the beta week. No, just damage. It, yeah, it wasn't balance at all. You just one shot everybody, and that was it. Well, yeah. So if you look at them, um, if you look in game right now in Diablo Four, there is a ninety-three percent damage reduction stat already applied to every player for PvP. For PvP, right? Yeah, that's good. Um, while we're kind of on this subject too, uh, while I was looking at a lot of the the different things on the items, because like I try to dive into like the crafting and stuff. Remember, um, okay, Diablo two and the other ones had faster hit recovery, right? Like that was a stat yes. for like you know to keep keep her from getting stun locked, right? Yeah, I didn't see anything like that on any of the items on uh uh for like physical like you know stun reduction or crowd control reduction or anything like that. The only thing I did see was reduced damage taken while crowd controlled. Yeah. And that's something that's kind of like, I don't the know. Only, the only other thing we have is something called unstoppable, which is on a lot of items or affixes. So that essentially just breaks crowd control at certain thresholds. Or if you, right. like it has, it on, the flame shield, for instance, has unstoppable by default. Right. Yeah. So just an immunity, but no real like, you know, uh, like no. stun, you know, recovery or something like that. I don't know if anyone else felt this, but have you ever played a game where when you're in some sort of, when you're being grabbed by a boss or when you're being stunned, you can't actually be killed. It's more of a cinematic thing where you can't actually lose your character or die. Uh, like, for example, one of the elder grabs in Path of Exile has that. You, like, you can't really die during it. It's more cinematic than anything. Um, Diablo 4 stuns felt like that. It feels like you can't die. <laughs> Even though you can. You can. Yeah, but it feels like you can. It seems like, wait, am I supposed to do anything here? Especially early on when you have no way to break out of them. It's like, well, my dodge doesn't work. So am I like, am I safe? But no, you can definitely die. So it's like, I just, uh, so annoying. Wait, the funniest thing that you mentioned that I, 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 that's actually how I died one time on hardcore, one hardcore death. There's, uh, you know, those impaler mobs. It was in the zoo yeah. dungeon. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I got impaled right as the mob died, right, and it oh. CC'd me, and then it perma-locked <laughs> me, and it made my unbreakable skill unusable, so I had, like, my, you know, my CC immunity with the legendary chest piece that gave you, uh, you know, your, your CC break, and since the mob died right as it CC'd me, I was in, like, a six-second permanent stun. I wasn't able to break it no matter what, and I died to that. <laughs> I, I saw that. I saw the clip. What happened was the uh, that particular elite spawned the uh, the untargetable uh, copies of itself, and yeah. you yes. just got chained, like, impaled by them, like, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Good. No, but I couldn't use my unbreakable on my W. So I had my W key, like, where you could press the CC immune. Either the mob died... It wouldn't let me use unbreakable, so I was locked That's out of using my skills to give me my CC immune. Oh, it was actually yeah. really built in. Yeah, <laughs> but I reported the bug, so hopefully that gets fixed. If the mob, when the mob dies, like right when it does it, yeah, it doesn't lock you out of your skills. That's interesting. I feel like a, they could do like a lost arc thing here. You know the the role in lost arc. So the CC doesn't. Like, there's a bigger cooldown on the CC roll now, mods, than on the uh -huh. than, than on the actual cooldown. So, like, if you've rolled recently, you, you get the CC immunity. I mean, that would not be a bad thing for Diablo, honestly. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Just to have something on every character to break it. Yeah, like some sort of, like, you can dodge to break a CC once a minute or something, at least in start, until you get, like, other breakers. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Uh, I, I want to go back to the whole... We were talking about the fact that the, the world was open, and that was kind of cool, seeing other people going around farming and stuff like that. Something I really despised by that was I was level 6, and I saw a level 22 character fighting the same bears and same wolves I was fighting, <laughs> and we were dealing basically the same amounts of damage, and I was like... <laughs> I can't exactly put my finger on this, but I hate it. It feels yeah. so weird. It is my least favorite thing, probably, about Diablo 4. Well, maybe mouse button one to move is my least favorite thing. But yeah, I don't know. It just felt so artificial and weird to me. It just didn't feel right. 
How do you, see, Keisha, how do you feel about the, uh, that everything always scales up with you? Scaling always sucks in every game, um, pretty much ever. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I will say, in terms of scaling, it, they probably did the best job of it. I know that it seems like a hot take or whatever. I, I still hate scaling, but I mean, at level 25, if we would have been only been able to like farm one area that would kind of fucking sucked. So you can go to, you know, at least you can go back to like starting dungeons. You're like, Oh, okay. At least these mobs are scaling up to me so they can drop loot that's relevant. Um, which was kind of nice, but yeah, the, the feeling of you being next to a level six and you're both having the same challenge, you know, or you might be having a little bit more of a challenge, uh, do the, you know, so it felt like there's definitely like kind of a difficulty spike once you hit like level 18, but everything's like obviously scaled to you. That seems like that was definitely a big jump. That was where a lot yeah, of people... Yeah, it's almost like you get punished for leveling up. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, yeah, scaling, I'm not a big fan of, but I figured with the open world stuff, they probably... It's either lazy or they just figured they had to do something. I, so, yeah. I do think yeah. it's a lot to do with it being an open world and it's hard not to do scaling. But do we know... Does it scale all the way up to max level? Or is it like the first one only probably. scales to 25? Because if it scales well, all know, the way, I hate it even more. There's probably thresholds. Like, there's probably, you know, certain levels that things will scale up to, like, to a certain degree. Because, like, there, there will probably be points where if you walk into, you know, like, the, like, area where Act 4 shit is, there's probably going to be stuff that one-shots you. Like that level 35 elite that was there. Because, yeah. I mean, at least that's probably proof that there's, you know, at least some stuff kind of out of your league. Yeah, yeah you I did like that. I did like that things didn't at least always scale down to you. Yes. That, that would minimum have been levels. devastating. Yeah. I mean, the next zones are probably going to, like, start at a minimum level as well yeah. as you enter them. Yeah. I mean, like, we, we could I hover have, over them if, already. Um, hmm? We could hover yeah, over yeah, them yeah. that said, like, 35, 40. Yeah. I think if... I actually thought that the scaling... I personally thought it made it better. And it's be, because I like it when you're fighting alongside someone. I like that experience. I like it when you're doing an event and everyone's kind of, like, just doing the things together because think about it let's a, a low scale event maybe like, let's say they give the same rewards but then someone who's high level would just sit there and farm the same thing and anyone coming in would just be like well i'm doing nothing here what's the point i guess i should always be carried i think that's worse that's my opinion because yeah, eventually mean, everyone will hit max level anyways and it won't matter right i i, I do agree with you I, I feel like scaling in general i dislike but i feel like they did it probably the best way they could and you know so so we can experience more content um you know at your at your at your level you know there won't be areas that are completely obsolete for loot. yeah so it might open up a lot of you know opportunities for farming because like it seems like there is kind of a variation of like loot that drops depending on where you go uh hopefully we see more about that yeah i mean uh, I, well, cosmetics are all based off zone right so like your cosmetic yeah. drops are influenced by regions so you'd like it's cold areas you get more fur related stuff I don't know about drop related stuff though. Yeah. I, I really I do really like what Nugi brought up stuff. too though. Seeing other people around the world feels good. And like I was thinking like, well, you don't really need scaling for that to happen. I could see similar level characters, but that is a big problem with it's only twelve people per zone. So I get that. But like I way prefer to see like imagine I'm level seventeen, I see some like level nineteen or twenty guy, and I know that the monsters are like the same difficulty. And he's struggling. That makes me feel really good about my build. Like, bro, do you need some help? And I come in like, clap, snap, everything's does. Like, bro, I can help you, dude. Let's make friends and I'll help you improve. Or I see someone that's lower than level me. He dies. Like, oh, there's like, there's so many cool experiences there. But with everything scaled, it's, it definitely takes away from that with, uh, for me. Uh, how do sure. you feel about the scaling nut months? early game like most people i didn't really like it because it takes away like the fantasy of an arpg where you're getting like these huge upgrades they're good drops or big increases and then you level up and then you're basically upgrade they're obsolete but for me it's all about end game right so all about end game replayability and i can see why scaling could be good end game because you're actually going to make use in, of the entire map continually throughout your playthrough if they didn't have the scaling stuff like four or five of these regions, you just would never visit them ever again. That artwork would be wasted. Those assets would be wasted. So, yeah, I kind of just, I wonder what it's going to be like end game wise and replaying the zones. These yeah. zones do look good and they want you in the overworld and stuff like that. 
And I, I'm also wondering if scaling is going to be abused, but you definitely had certain level thresholds and stuff like that. It seems like low levels were doing a lot more damage yeah. than like a geared character. So I wonder if people are going to make like level 12 pinks, like what limitations they have in place. You know, is someone going to twink out a level 12 character? Because I don't know if you guys were doing this, but you could use the cultists. And you could get like really, really low level aspect legendaries. Then you could get a really, really high item level item that wouldn't be normally be equipable. And it was basically a Diablo 3 gem of ease where you could take like a level 35 item and make it usable at level five. So you, there's right. definitely potential of making like super fully twinked out characters than using those twinked out characters to just absolutely decimate content. And that's what some people were doing already. Uh, but isn't isn't the torment scaling? Doesn't torment like require a certain level for you to enter it yeah it's like level 50 but that's later on so yeah. i don't know if people are going to do like some low level stuff with that but i mean yeah i, I was just I gonna don't... have a counter to the whole scaling thing though and making the entire world accessible in my opinion it sort of ends up making none of the world accessible because outside of what was the things the rewards you got for running around exploring called the renown oh, yeah, renown. Renown. Yeah. yeah outside of the renown if the entire world scales up, there it's not really going to make the entire world available because most of the time you're just going to have, okay, well, this is the best zone to farm or this is the best dungeon to farm for like XP or whatever. So at least whenever... I feel like it, you, you're going to have other ways that you need to balance that or that's going to be such a huge issue. Yeah. I think well, that right now... Gonna, oh, go ahead. You said there's certain ways where they're going to like uh, get people to play in different zones. I don't remember if I could say this or not. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. yeah that's the <laughs> problem with so much leaked stuff. <laughs> yeah. I think there's some incentive. Yeah, there's, there's some incentives. Yeah. I don't remember. I think the renown and all the things you can collect from the dot, like the, um, the aspects and all that, I think that will draw people around regardless. Yeah. And like eventually the whole zone levels up. And so we're like... The scaling becomes irrelevant once you hit like a, a torment and max level, anyways. So that that just disappears. The whole scaling thing disappears, and you'll have what you you're talking about immediately. And people, right. I mean, I think the renowned stuff is so powerful that there is almost no point to just grinding one zone. I, I just don't see it. There's like you need you want to get all the statues, you want to do the quest, so you level up your zone, and then you don't want to stay in that zone. You want to move. Because you get skill points, you get paragon points, you get, I forget what the other things are, a potion and all that, yeah. which are really big upgrades for your character. Yeah. Oh, I, they are. I, you mentioned potions. I really want to get your guys' take on this. Are you guys, how do you guys feel about the fact that there is an XP bonus on the potion? Like, I was, I was just so surprised all by All the consumables. Uh, yeah. I think it's great. I, really? Well, I, I, I feel like they probably are assuming that everyone's going to be max level fucking right away, and, and it's just grinding out the Paragon boards. You know, I... Right. I, know. I just don't see, like, what it achieves, and I feel like it's, like, it's a scary, scary thing to have in a game. Like, where does it go from there? Well, right. they did say they're going to do experience bonuses for everybody on, what, the Battle Pass, I guess, too, but they, they assured us it's going to be on the freemium tier, and no one's going to have to pay extra money for it. Yeah, I, I I do wonder how that'll work out in practice because you can pay to advance your battle pass level, which will advance your free one and your premium one. So that would be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think on the potion itself, I think with the variety of potions and the kind of buff they actually give, like disregard the XP, they're they're worth using. Oh yeah. So <laughs> you you should actually be using those potions. That, those Soren's and, potions and, were nice for leveling bar. I mean, really like good. pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you low on a, are you low on poison res? Maybe you should pop a poison potion before the boss. I know I should have. I so. was always popping those. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that, like you know, I, I I don't have the experience that you guys do, like from nerding out on these ARPGs like constantly. <laughs> but I come from a you know, I mean, I did you know all kinds of raid stuff and MMOs and lead raids and tanked and all that kind of shit. And play a lot of survival games, so I'm used to preparing, you know, so I don't fucking yeah. get wrecked. But. Yeah, we probably speed ahead and end up dying to that, though. So it, it is definitely smart to prepare. Uh, also, uh, chat is correcting me. Apparently, you cannot pay to level up the free one. Although I have yet to see a battle pass where the free and the oh. premium one isn't connected. But I would be pleasantly surprised by this. 
stuff. Yeah. Wait, what, 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 what are we talking about? Leveling up again? The battle pass. Renown shit? No, the battle pass. Battle pass. Oh. Yeah, so we don't know what's in it yet? No. They've been kind of vague with it. They've said it's cosmetic and non-pay to win. Right. They've said that very specifically, but yeah, I'm, right. I'm excited. Um, yeah. uh, I would be very I'll surprised if they level differently. Sorry, I'll, never forget, I'll never forget in Diablo Immortal when they said there was going to be, you weren't able to gonna, you weren't going to be able to buy character power, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, there's these gems that you can buy that." Well, no, they said gear the item slots. Yeah, they go inside of your gear, right? It was like it was <laughs> semantics. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, not actually gear. It just goes inside of your gear. So I don't know, Blizzard. Sometimes, man, I'm always a little doubtful. Yeah, they've been. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they have that lawyer speak sometimes. Yeah, it's like a different <laughs> level. Like, well, yeah, you yeah. don't actually know if you can believe what they're saying, or if you don't know what you can believe what they're saying. Do not trust and then verify. Yeah, yeah. No, it'll be um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how long term monetization. And I'm really interested in how much content do you guys think is going to be added in the season updates, like. I was thinking, like, are we going to get new skills in a season update ever, or is that going to be DLC only? Because imagine how insane it would be if we got one or two new skills every uh, every season. That'd be sick. Yeah, oh. I mean, I mean, I'd like to see it. Yeah, Joe Shelley, <laughs> um, the the lead designer, right? He said the seasons are going to be meaty. That that was the exact quote. Meaty. They want to do meaty big seasons, continual yeah. live service support. I don't know what that really uh, means, but meaty, okay, big big chunky ones, okay, like it, new yeah. bosses, new content. I mean, uh, with the with it being like having this open world stuff, there's a lot more things that they can do in terms of like events and like with seasons or whatever else. There can be all kinds of new world events and uh, that kind of thing. So I mean, they they're not painted into. A quarter, they've kind of opened the options that they can add for in terms of new content, even if it's like you know monthly new shit that's going on. Yeah, I I love events and stuff, and what I really hope like because it is like it's not just strictly an ARPG. It is a bit like MMO light. I've seen people calling it because of the open world feel and stuff. I personally I love like do you know the gathering event in World of Warcraft for the Gates of Ankaraj? Probably my favorite mm -hmm. gaming event in all my entire life. Yeah, I would love to see shit like that in D4. Can you run it down? Because I did. I don't think I ever did that one. So it was like the entire server has to gather like loads of resources, like wood, a bunch of different stuff. And I can't remember exactly how it worked because it's so long ago, but was it like the guild that helped gather the most was able to become emperor of the gates or something? I can't remember oh. the exact things. But uh, the opening on Kraj, I don't think anything in gaming history will ever be that for me. Um, Dude, yeah, agreed. I, I was I was playing during that. You know what my favorite part of that was? We were going to be like we were the like the top contributor. I was going to get the the Karaji War Mount and all that kind of stuff. And they had a Ticondrius. I was on a newer server called Calicos at the time. They gave a free transfer from Ticondrius onto our server. So one of the fucking guilds from that server came onto our server right at the beginning of that event and then fired it off and did all the shit, like turned it all in. <laughs> oh no. Uh, and kind of fucked us. So yeah, that was great. I love that event. <laughs> I, I would love to see things like that though, with the fact that it does have a bit of an MMO light and not just like single player play on your own. Feel to have like people feeling like they're working together. Like that was really cool when I was actually, um, there was one event on my barb I was really struggling with because I had built full Thorns build. I don't even think I'd bothered much with abilities. So I was just like, I can't do anything unless things are hitting me. And it was the one where things are like trying to go towards the demon in the oh. middle. And I was like, I have no single target damage unless they hit me. And then some sort came by and saved me. And I was like, oh, that was really nice. I'm very happy there's somebody here. So, so that was good. I like that. Like interacting with people that way is fun. Oh, I, I had a question or thing. Uh, the fortresses, or sorry, yeah, the fortresses. I had to, like, uh, get other people that weren't on that part of the campaign to invite me in order to reset them. So, like, oh. is it, do oh. they reset daily? Because you can reset the dungeons, but, like, the fortresses, like, I know they're supposed to, some of them turn into a town that have a waypoint and, like, other dungeons that open up inside them. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, is there a way to fucking do that? Or do they have that in the plans to be able to reset your fortresses? Or is it supposed to be a daily, like, you know... I didn't uh, think it was thing? supposed to reset at all. I thought they were yeah, one I and think, done ever. I think you were kind of yeah. exploding there with the yeah. jumping to a different shard of uncompleted, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm getting multiples here. It was the only place to get the, the fucking scattered prisms for shocking shit. It was the, ch oh, the chest right. out of there. Or one of yeah. the only, one of the few. The cursed chest uh, inside there, or the resplendent chest that were behind like ice, was mm -hmm. like a, a pretty good source for that. Because everyone was dead on hardcore. Couldn't get a fucking kill on the world boss. Actually, I don't think anyone on hardcore killed the world boss. Because no. everyone that had no, tried it early on. Did they win? Yeah. Which one? The world boss? Yeah, the world boss on hardcore. Yeah, I mean, people killed it from, like, the first one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. I thought everyone fucking so? died. Rice did, Ben no did. Yeah, a few people killed it solo. Ben actually almost yeah. cut it down solo, because he had, like, over-farmed a lot on Sork, and he had, like, pretty good combo. Oh, okay. I just didn't... I, I know people killed it on softcore, but I thought yeah. everyone died on, on hardcore. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people died, but... I... I wonder, by the way, is that always going to be a low level world boss or is that supposed to be a super high level one that got scaled down? I have no idea. They did show other world bosses, so I don't know if there's going to be like a world boss in each area. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like this, the whole area down there was meant for it, no? Yeah. It's yeah. like a little arena. Oh, someone in chat says it was a little 45 that was scaled down. Cool. Oh, and it changes with the tears. That makes sense. I was a little surprised how much loot it was dropping, especially at that level. And, uh, and we can move on to itemization stuff. I was also a little just surprised of how many legendaries people had at level 25. And I think, from what I recall, people were saying that XP was faster in the beta, but I don't think anyone talked about loot being different in the beta. So I wonder, yeah. is this the amount of loot we're going to have in terms of legendaries? Because full set of legendaries at 25 i for me honestly even just the change of the word like the name is that uh, would, would do a lot because it just doesn't feel very legendary to be decked out in in gear at 25 yeah i think they're just going a different approach of legendaries in diablo 4 it's not like the same tier in diablo 2 or diablo 3 it's kind yeah. of just like a rare with enhanced stats with build enabling affixes that are just all interchangeable at the cultists right you're always just going to be on the lookout for a good rare, a good legendary. You could do like your reroll affix at the occultist, and you could always just freely swap aspects. So it's not really the right. same, right? Uniques, uniques essentially are the new legendary quality. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the data mine stuff. They're, it's like someone data mined all the uniques already, and some of them are pretty insane. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, legendaries aren't really legendary. They're kind of just like enhanced rares with build enabling affixes that are interchangeable. Or whatever if, you're if doing. They were, right. If they were the color purple and it didn't say legendary, people wouldn't have thought twice about it. I'm like, I yeah. hope they nerfed the I, legendary. Because like it's a part of the they're not that much better than rares, and it's just Yeah, I, I agree. I, I feel like that's the core of like crafting is pretty much the legendary aspects if you got a good roll of them. Well that and that right that now. is actually the problem for me is the wording. It's just like I have uh, someone growing up with wow, like one person on the server having Thunder Fury, like I think I wouldn't have had an issue with it if they called it epic. It was just the wording for me. Like, to, to, it was a little reductive for me. So it is like a small thing to um, whine about. But people in chat are saying that they, most people are saying uh, boost or loot was boosted for the beta. I wonder what well, it's going to be like. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, because it's one of those things like, isn't this a good test bed for it? So maybe they're using the data for this mm -hmm. to like, Help balance did, was, yeah. did any of the devs confirm it or community managers? I didn't see any posts saying seeing that it was boosted. I think people were just speculating that I it was. I haven't seen any confirmation either, no. Yeah. Beyond the uh, naming scheme, though, like, what did you think about the actual drops? Like, the fact that you get all those aspects. Well, they're not as What are they actually? Like, the, the second part of the legendary. Because, like, they would both be an aspect. Like, there would be an aspect if you picked up from a dungeon. But are they also just aspects when you talk about them on the legendary? I, I think yeah. we just refer to them yeah. as aspects. And then you can call right. them minimum level just dungeon aspects. Right. Yeah. 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 So, hey, Keisha, how do you feel about itemization? Um... Out of all of the things that I've, like, I was trying to figure out, because like crafting's like you know one of one of the things I really like to dig into. Um, I guess I'm kind of concerned that there's more, there's not more 
uh, Apex, you know, types available. Because uh, a lot of them, it seems like there's a lot of stuff hopefully we just haven't seen yet. I would imagine, though, like at level 25, you would probably see most of them to some degree. Um, and there was a, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the way that the crafting is. I feel like a lot of it is farming gold and upgrading your equipment after you get like a good, a good, a good roll of a rare and then putting a sick aspect on it. And then, you know, doing all, doing all the thing, running it through like all the, all the different, uh, upgrade shit through the vendors. I think it's kind of cool, but I would like to see more, more stuff available on items. Cause there's, it feels like there's a lot of stuff like kind of missing <laughs> yeah. to kind of make your builds a little bit more unique. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of dead attributes, and they put it's so weird. They took some of like the weird secondary attributes from like Diablo 3, like range damage reduction and melee damage reduction, and they put more limitations on it. They're like range damage reduction oh, from right. elites, and you're like, why is this even like one of the primary like attribute rolled on my piece of gear? Like, they did do like some good things, like the plus skill stuff is extremely build enabling. They did like different right. damage scaling or like more damage over time. Like the close combat stuff, that's all right. They did like some elemental stuff. Um, like some of those affixes are they're good, but then there's also just some like the dead weight affixes. You're like, why do these even exist? Like get them their own slot or to, like just remove them or put them like some other place on like the skill tree if you really want that stuff. Or maybe Paragon board too. Don't be a Paragon board. We don't really know too much about it. True. Yeah, it's just like too specific of stats that often aren't utilized for your core build. So right. it just kind of seems meaningless. You're like, why? A lot of dead stats. I'm still really concerned about the stun thing. Um, like, yeah. you know, the, the, the only thing that I saw was like damage reduction while crowd controlled. So like you could go all in and like, well, I'm going to get stunned. So if I get stunned, you know, I've got some good damage reduction there. I, I will say though, the, the damage reduction for close and like, you know, whatever else is fucking really strong. Yeah. Really strong. Yeah. Like it, it scaled really well. Like That's that good. percentage is like super um, you know, uh what 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 do you refer to it as uh when the math like for percentages is like what do you say like a global thing? When it like more multiplier? Uh, it, Bubble multiplier? Yeah, when it's, when it, you know, it's more effective to like the overall like multiplicative. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Noogie, how do you feel about the items? I think I think that I think I'm in the boat where I think that it was better than I thought it would be, because I think like once you start, because okay, so once you actually hit, so you don't get the the level two items that early. Like I don't think they spawn in the very first tiers. They come a little later. I think once they start inhabiting the items, it's you get all of a sudden you're like I would really like these specific ones, but there are so many I want to avoid. Like not not like not bad ones you want to avoid, but there are specific ones that are really good for what you're doing, and then there are some that are like kind of mid for what you're doing. I I don't think it's and resistances I think are going to be important later on. I think right now people are probably like they see resistor like who gives, you know, like a yeah. flying whatever about that. But I think they will be important to find the right just see the dragons like especially early on at least. You definitely want to get your resist. You want so I think there is more there. I would like to see some more unique affixes here and there sure right. i think they could add a little bit more i don't know exactly what it should be but i kind of like the i i didn't feel that there was any dead stats mm. it's just like they might not be perfect for my build mm. and that's like resist, every though, rpg uh what they showed previously in one of the developer blog posts it looks like a lot of your resistances are going to come from the paragon board right because you have like right. different tiers of nodes right like the common rare okay. um, magic ones and you have like your legendary nodes but uh, at least from the original plan what they highlighted at the paragon bo bo board before you're going to get a lot of like attribute points and resist and then you're getting like these legendary nodes and then there's kind of like these threshold jewel type systems like glyphs on the paragon board Kind of like think path of exile where you'll socket something a glyph i don't know how you earn them but you'll socket the glyph and then it'll enable stuff within an area and boost stuff and then you take other paragon boards and you like flip them through and you attach them to your paragon boards um so i don't know what it evolved into but that's what they originally showcased for like more like of your end game gear and customization i think uh the thing i really didn't like was attributes meaning so little early on yes oh my god because they're generally like up. a 
I am a barb. I like strength. I'm building some strength. It should be my primary one. I should feel as if my primary stat benefits me in some way really well. That would be nice. So I think yeah. the stats are very underwhelming, especially early on. I right. do think they could bring up like the, the numbers. They, that doesn't mean that end game they need to be higher, but maybe maybe have them have more impact early on. So that would be nice. I, I think that's a yeah. big problem with it being percentage based and not flat. Because when you're going to have it percentage based, like getting 0.1% damage early game is always ever going to do nothing. Yes. And then yeah, that's why strength is good because it's flat armor. It's yeah. one of the better ones. Yeah. Right. Wilson actually deals with this in a, in a, in a better way. Surprisingly, I've been playing Wilson for the past three days where oh, yeah. if you take a bunch of stats early, they, you kind of end up getting punished for leveling, uh, in a way because your stats, like the same amount of stats will matter more at a low level than at a high level. But mm. like the, I would prefer that because what I really hated was until I started getting some of the more interesting stats that I cared about, it felt very green arrow equals equip. And that, that felt a <laughs> little too basic for me. I was like, I mean, it's green. And like, it wasn't yeah. until like level 15, 20 ish that I was like, okay, this is green, but I do want the plus one Hydra. Oh, Nuji, I mm -hmm. got you on the dead stats. Okay. Okay. Plus all stats. Yeah actually a dead stat because fucking no matter what class you play only two of the attributes are right. going to be useful to you essentially like, like right. playing a barb the int i know a lot of i think both the rogue and the sork both get crit off of the int uh i think um the barb definitely does not uh for every i think 20 right. points of intellect you get plus one all resist as a barb and dex uh yeah the same thing. like every yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 40 dex for one percent of crit some shit like that so yeah, the plus all stats I think is pretty much worthless for like anyone. I just yeah. think they 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 didn't manage to make stats in general feel as if they had any like significance for any character. Right. Yeah. I think it's so it's not do, early levels. They were gonna originally do attribute point allocation per level up, but they I guess they ended up removing that out of the game at some point in time because that was not playable right. uh, on this beta anymore. And then, yeah, willpower, it just, it mostly granted, like, well, overpowered damage or, like, improved healing. So maybe there is some, like, crazy, like, life regen build or, like, support build or maybe there's some overpower tech later on late game. But overpower is interesting, right? Because you'd hit for no yeah. damage and then you would really, you just hit for, like, 20 times damage. You're like, where'd that, where'd that yellow number come from? Yeah. Well, that's actually, like, insane damage, but you couldn't really scale it up too crazy during the beta. I tried doing it, but it wasn't, right. like, yeah, too wild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I, so dependable. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those actually. The the lucky proc, the overpower oh, yeah. and crit. Um, because then you have like interesting ways to build around and hope maybe there will be something where you don't take either of those for, for whatever reason. Uh and people are like, Well, isn't that just crit and crit two and crit three? And I was like, Yeah, but it's it's an interesting way to build because with the lucky proc, you can make like basically a proc based build. I started doing it already on my Sork. Um where I had the, I think it was a 30% chance on lucky hit that any time I dealt fire damage or any damage, my ice nova would proc. And I'm actually at my lucky proc to 20 or 25. So my hydra is for actually procking my ice nova quite a lot. And imagine if I had that at 100, the hydra hits so much, you have two hydras down, it's just saying plink, 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 loads of ice novas. So I, I really enjoy that. One thing I like about lucky proc as well. So what happens when you're making. Uh, skill choices is rather than just looking at the raw damage number you sometimes end up looking at you know what procs better like what is a skill that does a thing to enable the other thing rather than just the skill doing more damage than the other so you end up with maybe a different skill that you would normally use that might not be considered the best if you're only using the skill for what it normally does but you end up using it for its other purpose mm -hmm. yeah, and i think Oh, sorry. Just, sorry. just to wrap it up with the lucky proc, I think uh, they actually did a really good job with that stat because it's never the same thing f for the different characters, and depending on how you spec it, it's always something different. The Keisha? Yeah, the lucky hit stuff. Um, one of the only ones that I really saw on Barb that was seemed really useful was. Uh, what was the only one that I, that I remember seeing was the chance to execute non elites. And 
I didn't really see any other ones that really. I think that's inherent. Right. I think everyone gets that, but it can also be something else. Right. It'll proc something else as well. Or I guess yes. if you have an aspect that can use it. See. Yes. So the lucky hit is if so if you, if you get like a lucky hit like proc because you've got a little bit more of it or whatever anything that will apply from lucky hit will all fire off at once is that is that like the consensus or or so, they all have like their own like uh, chance I guess okay so the way I understand it is that a lucky hit will have a chance to proc an effect. And so depending on the skill, it has a lucky hit percentage. Certain skills will have a 30% chance, other skills with a 100% chance. So every time you hit with the skill, you'll get the lucky hit. And then you can have like a proc that, spa, like that has whatever when lucky hit hits. So there's like a double thing. First, you need to hit the lucky proc, and then there's going to be a proc on that lucky hit. So sometimes it's a 30% chance to vulnerability when you're lucky. As yeah. Sometimes it's spawn a blizzard. Sometimes it's... So certain skills will have a really high chance to like just lucky proc all the time. And then you get the other secondary yeah. effects. Well, I didn't uh, see any good ones for Barb, I guess. Right. <laughs> I don't think there really is any. <laughs> I looked as well. It was also kind of disappointing that Barb didn't get access to the, the mastery thing. Oh, that sucks, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, but but even then, the the mastery thing for Barb and Rogue seems like much less interesting than the Sork one. I think the Sork one is such a well executed idea. And another streamer, Rice QT, had a really good idea where every class should have that. Every class should have the the one the mastery thing Sork had, and at least two, and then Sork should have four. I think that was a really good idea. It would open up for so yeah. many more builds and just interesting stuff in general. I don't even insane. know what the barb one was. What was the barb specialization? Because I didn't, I, you know, it's I, weapon I, specific. So you like you choose a ma mastery for it. Yeah, yeah. And then it has like a secondary depending on what weapon you choose. So you get like the weapon thing, and then you get the secondary thing depending on the weapon. Right, okay. Hmm. What yeah. uh, what gems are you guys using on your weapons? Uh, it depends on the build, uh, either like auto attack ones or damage over time ones or some overpower yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'll just swap them out to try different setups for it. It seemed like the basic attack ones seem like the most powerful ones, unless you're doing life on hit, you know, It'll give you, or not life on hit, life on kill or whatever. Everything else seemed kind of pointless for Barb, I guess. I didn't care that much about gems except getting skulls into my rings. That seems completely broken <laughs> because. Well, which one's it's armor, but it's high flat armor, and it gives way more than it probably should. So you basically can go from like 25 damage reduction to 75 damage reduction just by socketing a ring. Uh, not quite. I you mean, need, it's a lot. Need, it's more than it should. Yeah, yeah, but you need the... And the thing is, you're going to overpower, like, or overlevel those gems as well like eventually yeah like that's that that flat armor will be worth less and less yeah, yeah. it's just like it's really good in the beta because we like cap at 25. yeah no i don't so fast um, oh, in regards to like the character stuff this weekend for a druid test and also they're not gonna have access to their class uh mastery either which should be interesting oh, no. yeah yeah so i think it's the yeah, i would have locked and locks and scos clan so you're not actually gonna be fully able to like tests and fully experienced druid either i think they also should have just had extent. it unlocked by default like as soon as you hit 15 yeah like if they don't want to move the quest that's fine but like just let it unlock by default for the beta yeah i wonder if there's like technical limitation in the place that stopped them from just giving all the like removing the quest requirements and stuff yeah, yeah it's kind of weird to have a test and then just not have access to like your class of the most powerful system you know yeah. mm -hmm. then it makes it feel underwhelming and how do you guys feel about the controls and stuff like that? Obviously, I was very frustrated about the mouse button one. But did either of you, or any of you, try controller or anything? I played controller on PC. It was actually extremely good. Um, it was the the inputs were fluid. An issue that I was having on keyboard is sometimes when I was using my skills alternating them, you know, like you know, just hitting your abilities. Uh, my key, mouse and keyboard input would not be registered. I never had that delay issue or that non-registration -reg on controller. And then another thing, uh, in dungeons, when you use shrines, you know, you get the conduit shrine sometimes, right? 
and uh, you'd be using it through the dungeon mouse and keyboard. Controller had this auto aim, auto target function, not only for mob, but also for breakable objects. So I actually still have my controller hooked up here. So whenever I get a conduit shrine in a dungeon, I actually just swap to my controller. I just literally hold A and I ping pong through the entire dungeon like instantaneously. It makes it so much more efficient. You don't even have to like try to like target stuff on mouse and keyboard. So yeah, controller actually has some benefits, but then there's oh, like no. some downsides where your movement abilities don't go as far uh, on controller too. So I don't yeah. know if you, yeah, you guys didn't play controller. So if you're using your teleport, you could put your mouse cursor on your source uh, like farther away and it'll teleport to that region. Controller, it's like a set distance. So your movement abilities actually traverse a smaller area. Damn. That is pretty unlucky. Right. But Definitely other than that, controller. controller. Yeah, so controller felt really good though. Try if you have a controller, try the conduit shrine thing this weekend though. Whenever you get it, just hold a button and it's like flicker strike and path of exile. You just it's insane. I am not plugging a controller in my motherfucking PC. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh my god. Do you do you hate controllers as much as me? Like a controller lord over here. What is it? I love you. I love you. PC, mouse, keyboard, master of everything. Just... You can tell that the game is definitely like designed for playing like on on a controller though. Um yeah, the the thing is that that first the you know the click to move, I wanted the click to move. I was trying to fucking make it work, you know, the click to move, they use an ability. And then then I started realizing that like the way that this game it, it requires you to use your basic skill to like, you know, use your uh, to build your resource. That's like part of like the, one of the main fucking things. So it's like really kind of hard then because we only have so many skill slots, you know, if we had a whole nother bar of skill slots that we could, you know, because like for a game that gives you like you get a necklace and you're like, hey, plus all brawler shit, right. plus all this, you have so many use like uh, skills that you could use that are just sitting there rotting. Yeah. And it seems like a very common thing. It just kind of sucks that like, you know, we have a maximum of six slots, period. I, 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 I think I agree. A second bar would be yeah. really nice for sure. Yeah. I was, Even if I was so frustrated because I, I really hated that about D two and D three, like move only not being there because it's it's only the Diablo genre that does it. Pretty much any other ARPG I can think of is a very normal mouse button move move only as an option, and everyone was like, "This they have move only," and I'm like, "Oh my god, finally!" I was so excited. I opened my settings and I had been a little negative about it. I was like, "I bet you they won't have move only," and I was like, "Oh, I was wrong." I was so excited. I opened the settings. I ungroup them, and now I can't pick up loot. And I'm like, know, what the shit? <laughs> what the you, shit? Like, clicking on an item, why would it not let you pick it up? Like, you, to talk to a vendor, you had to, like, mouse over it and then hit the, whatever the fucking interact button was on your keyboard. It was so dumb, dude. It's like, it's personal at this point. I'm like, why be so stubborn? It's like, I, oh. I don't think they're being stubborn. I think someone was tasked. This would be my guess. Someone was being tasked with making a UI, and they're like, what would be the best for players? We'll give them all the choice they can. They can just decide exactly what button they want to press, and they just haven't made the realization that in ARPGs in general, you have the double functionality. Because they have been out saying they would like to give us, move on, like all the options that the keyboard and mouse would like. So I, I, I don't know. If we give them feedback, I would assume that they would like listen and maybe do something. If not, then sure. Yeah. I'll agree. That's fair. I mean, I've given the feedback very loudly. Um, I think a lot of people have at oh, this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Which is oh, good. For sure. Uh, also, I did just get confirmation that the loot is tuned higher in the beta. So that's really good. Oh, so hopefully we will okay. get less legendaries yeah. in the full experience. Or loot. Cool. So, so you can get smacked by the butcher and fucking graze now in hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I like that a lot. Okay, there's actually one thing about the whole movement scheme and like controls that I really liked. Because I hadn't thought about that before. Okay. Having a specific button for picking things up is like the best thing ever. No, hear me out. In PoE, if you misclick just the tiniest bit, your character moves. And you're like constantly moving around while clicking. Rather than having a, a for, where you can just go into the middle of a pile, click everything around you, and you're like, mm, this is just, mm, I'm just clicking, and my character's not moving. It's actually one of the most frustrating and most like, 
where you're sitting in, in I'm telling you, in when you play PUE for a lot of hours and you're getting tired and you're like just kind of trying to like finicky try and hit the right thing and you start clicking and really no, it's really it actually really is something that tires you out in your like wrists and arms. So it's really nice having so it's it's good to have the option. something. Yes. We should have both mm-hmm. options. Yes. I'm just saying that something out of something I didn't know I needed came out of it, which I really actually liked. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of options. I, yeah, after the first five minutes of having to mouse over something and then hit, hit a key on your keyboard, I think you'd get sick of it real fucking quick, dude. Because yep. like I tried it for a while. I just couldn't get used to it. It was just like, why can't I just click on the fucking thing and it goes in my inventory? You know? <laughs> no, I yeah. played Last like Epoch afterwards, game. and I actually tried to pick it up with my pickup button. Because it already yeah. like registered so well with me that this was the new way of like playing the game. Because it just felt natural. So like everyone has to, you know, their preference. So when you did that, were you down a skill? Like you were. No, you no, no. Only hit five skills then, right? No, 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 no. Okay. No, you you rebind the the mouse one skill to something else. Yeah. So I just have another keybind on my keyboard. Yeah. If you use the one where you have to have a force pickup move, you don't lose the skill. I actually just sacrificed the skill on mine because then you do actually get the normal move and force move thing. So I oh, sacrificed no. the skill. Yeah, I did. Terrible. Yeah, that I did awful. that. Using five skills? Yeah, yeah, I was only what? using five skills. I was like, you know what? This game is fucking easy anyway. It's level 25, low level shit. I have loads of legendaries. I don't need all skills. I'll just have increase the difficulty a little bit. So I, I just had nothing on my mouse button one, and then I got my normal experience that I wanted to anyway. So I was fine. <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a normal source enjoyer. Just Hydra and Barrier, that's it. That's all I need. Uh, yeah, I just really wanted Mouse Scroll Wheel from playing a lot of Diablo 3. I just mm. wanted to force move with that, but you could bind it, but it wouldn't let me uh. force move a Mouse Scroll Wheel. You could mm. like do it by using like some rebinding software and bind it to a key and then bind that key to Mouse Scroll Wheel, but it, you couldn't do it through the game. And then See, that just bypasses everything, right? You just still click. Like... I, I think you should have the choice to do that because I'm a big fan of choice, but I think you're fucking psychotic. I couldn't imagine scrolling my mouse wheel to move. That is some fucking serial killer shit. Holy. <laughs> Bro, it's really, really good. You get used to it so easily. And it builds strong fingers too. Yeah. So if you ever go like, if you ever go rock climb with Mathel, you could maybe beat him. Yeah, you touch the mountain and the mountain just falls away. Yeah, but here, yeah, you, you just you just get biceps on your fingers by mouse scroll wheeling. I want to try to keep the podcast kind of short and zippy. So, is there any topic you guys are really burning to talk about? Um, we talked mm. about some loot, I guess. I guess the crafting. Did we go like? I guess we kind of touched on that. It's like aspects and whatever else. Yeah. But yeah, oh, actually, talking about uniques. I initially thought that you could extract the unique power and just put it on anything. And I was like, I was so disappointed when I thought that because that just seemed like everything was super homogenized. But apparently that's not the case. And that makes me very happy because a really, really important feature for me to ARPGs is like a lot of the D2, uh, not monetization, itemization, where you you see a Viper, skin of the Viper Magi, you are excited. You know what that item is. You're so excited. I, I really want to and hope I find, find that feeling in this game too, where I drop something and maybe I drop a unique ring and I'm like, ooh, is it? Is it Stone of Jordan? Is it? I want to be excited for items and I hope uniques will bring that when we actually have uh, that in the game. It oh, also you unidentified stuff. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, true. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. I, I think the everything already being identified, I totally forgot about it by the time the end of the, you know, the end of the beta, but I think it's fucking kind of cool. The shit's already identified. Yeah. Because like that extra step, you know, you didn't realize the kind of quality of life. I know it's like the standard, like, oh, I think so. you know, you go to town with your scrolls or you go to, I guess, maybe because Deckard Kane's not in the game anymore. Maybe they took right. that out, but. I, I agree. I would still want identification for unique items that have, especially okay. several uniques per base. Uh, right. That's something D2 did really well. But I think identification as a concept in ARPGs is super outdated. It only really makes sense in like CRPGs when there is either the fact that identification is something you need to learn that your character can't do by default, 
or you can equip unidentified gear and try to glean what the stats are and they could be cursed with negative stats then it makes sense but in arpgs identification is very outdated right yeah it's uh, the only thing we didn't really talk about that i would like to talk about is on release they're pretty much being no crafting in the game besides the re-rolling at the cultists uh and we'll end like potion upgrade than other stuff like don't you guys feel that's kind of weird for a modern big title like Diablo 4 that even had like gathering and like resource acquisition dismantling and not have like any sort of in-depth crafting at all or even just like a more simplistic system? True. Yeah, I mean like crafting is one of my favorite things and like it seems like what the crafting meta is is obviously finding a good aspect role that you want to use and whatever it is and then finding a good rare that has only one dead stat on it <laughs> and then you know trying to re-roll that into something worth the shit it's kind of a i think it's part of their big gold sink using the crafting yeah. as a way to think gold is not really that doesn't really make a good crafting system but at least there is some type of way to modify items which is cool but yeah i would like to see more maybe, maybe there'll be more vendors um because like most of it all seems to be like based on uh you know the occultist and the jewel whatever you know, vendors, maybe there will be more vendors that offer more interesting um, yeah. you know, things for the items, hopefully so anyway. I'm not, I feel like if they want to do crafting, sure they could, but it would have to be, I mean, it would really have to like fit the game. I don't think it's bad to not have that much crafting, honestly, because it does, there's a flip side to it, right? If you can craft, well, then you're not picking up, like then you're less incentivized to just find the thing you need. Yeah. Right? It so is, yeah. There, yeah. there's like a there there's like a give and take here. Like uh, what's good crafting, what's not good crafting. And the way P, like the way Diablo works is I feel like with its system not being I mean it's not each individual item is not there's not that much to it. So it's more like you want to get the right role. So it's more about, you know, going out and finding that thing. So I don't know mm -hmm. what they could do with crafting to really well, make it so you know. We have seen in one game that do does both well because PoE has a big problem with that, right? In PoE, crafting mm -hmm. is king. You basically only loot and identify items early game. It's traditionally not something you ever get an end game item with. Mm -hmm. However, Last Epoch does have both exciting crafting and exciting looting, so it mm -hmm. is possible. But yeah, I mean there are yeah. there are several things that just aren't in at launch, and while that does give like some feeling of the game is a little unfinished. I, I think we'll probably end up seeing, maybe that's what he means, but that there's going to be meteor seasons, like maybe we'll have a crafting league. And then obviously at some point we're going to get rune words back in, then they'll have a rune words specific league. Um, and what I'm dreading the most, which we didn't talk about, set items league. Because in my opinion, set items is the, the reason that I don't touch Diablo 3 at all. It's the... The feature oh, I loved good. growing up, I think it's the coolest thing, and now it's the single worst game feature. I don't right. think any video game has ever done set items right, and Diablo 3 did it worst. And I'm specifically talking about, like, play this build now. 3,000 meteor damage, or 3 million meteor damage. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Frick uh, set uh, items. Yeah, I'm, I've always disliked that too, because it just homogenizes the very, you know, the variation of builds and all that kind of thing on that same subject though um actually kind of sorry this, i'm gonna trail off a little bit so mm -hmm. I don't know if you have anything else to say about the sets and shit the hub uh is trade with players gonna be dead uh because of the smart loot are you only gonna be like say if i'm playing a barb am i pretty much only gonna be selling barb shit because that's all it drops for me it seems like I'm, it but but okay yeah. so for a long time people are told uh, you can find other you're it's barely, just though. more likely. It's, really rare, it's rare. Yeah. Like I found like a couple of sites and shit for for a right. necro. But... So, I mean, the uniques are probably gonna drop. Like gonna be. Yeah, but know. isn't trading items only a beta thing? Yes. Some people are saying it's well, a bug, but I'm not sure. Well, people had told me not. that loot was untradeable, except for like a few rare resources and gold. And can't you trade in party? There, you're supposed to be able to trade like rares, but I don't think you're supposed to trade legendaries. But during the beta, they were tradable if you're playing with somebody. You could just open right. up the window and give it to your buddy. Yeah. It didn't matter. Okay. You just couldn't trade them if you re rolled anything, right? If you had made adjustments, then it would make an account bound. But yeah, you're just able to freely trade most things during the beta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But it will be a lot I'm less like, limited. And more limited. Gonna, like ninety-five percent of the things that you found were for your character, like if not more yeah. than that. So, I, yeah, you could find yeah. stuff for other people, but I found six items that weren't for my class. So I, I am like that. I'm very sad about. I'm very anti-smart loot because pretty much the only reason I ever make a new character is if I'm playing and I find like a really cool item. Or like, I'm playing Sork and I'm like, I find a really cool druid item. I'm like, I'm going to make a druid. This is sick. I want to use this. Yeah. They're th I... too much smart loot. I like being able to find specific upgrades for your own character, whether it's via target farming or just by playing the game. Uh, but yeah, you should be able to get like cool stuff to make a new character and incentivize making a new character too. So you don't want the loot to be overly smart. You want like a good trade-off. Yeah, it's just maybe they could even have it as an option that for people that want smart loot and only want to see stuff for their All own right, class, okay. they can do that. But for the people that do want to potentially find stuff for other classes, they can toggle it off and then you will find things to either trade with other players. That would be great. Yeah, honestly, I think that would be a good option. Yeah. Like for your all, so for the people you're playing with in the group, like we're searching for this for you right now, that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. I think global trading with other players is something I think is good that's very limited. Because I have not seen any game of this scale launch without massive botting issues, if that is enabled. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be bots based off the systems you saw? Um, like I mean, that depends on gold. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gold. all down to that. Yeah, gold seemed like it was... Uh... The game was very, yeah. very gold hungry, no matter what, and it was tradable, right? Like, did you guys ever get a surplus of gold at all no. when you were playing? No, constantly like no, pouring yeah. in upgrades. But uh, but if you vendoring the stuff did yield like a good amount of gold, I felt like there was a good balance between like you vendoring a bunch of shit and then you know spending it on you know whatever. But yeah, I think the scaling might also serve as a double uh, uh, to prevent like botting too, because if everything's scaling up, you know. Whatever bots aren't going to be able to farm lower level areas easily without I, potentially dying. I had a lot of gold. I was a sort. I didn't need to upgrade at all. Didn't bother upgrading much. Just had a lot of gold just sitting around. I was like, this is easy. <laughs> slap, slap Hydra. I rerolled an item one account. time. <laughs> people that actually had to optimize their account. That's what we're talking about. It's not people that just slapped on two skills and just beat the game. It's great. Uh, I thought I had a lot of gold. I had like 200k in my inventory. I was like, oh, that's pretty easy. We can re-roll a little bit. I clicked like five times. I had 500 gold left. It's <laughs> like, oh, no, no, because it scales up so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Was yeah, like, the disparity. Like, okay. Yeah, right. the disparity on the cultists, like your first re-roll of an affix was like 2k, and the second re-roll was like 15k. Or like, why was this jump so large? A little more like 13k. Yeah. But... Yeah, I don't know if you guys felt this way, but when I was doing re-rolling, if I, I would only re-roll the affix multiple times to get a more ideal one if it was if that one was really good. Other, other than that, I would just re-roll once, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, if you got up to like like four or five, like you were easily dumping like one hundred fifty thousand gold <laughs> into a fucking item. It got expensive real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about one final topic, and then I think we'll jump into everyone's final thoughts on like before beta and like. Just yeah, TLDR, if you had fun or not. So, a final thing I want to talk about. How do you guys feel about the early access four day? Because I fucking hate it with a passion. I don't think you should be able to pay any money to be able to play oh my before other people. And I really Bro. hate the argument that the ladder's not live yet because the launch of the game is the most fun, no matter what. Yes. So, right. I really want to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Oh. Let's start with that mods. Bro. It is so bad. I absolutely hate that they're giving four-day early access for increased payment. But the reason why they do it because it's free money. It's like asking for Twitch Prime and Twitch Chat. You know what I mean? That's like kind of the comparison of it. Like they know that it's just free money. But the worst thing apart about it is most games, when they do the early access, they set the early access launch on Tuesday. Diablo 4 and Blizzard, they're setting the early access on the launch day on friday so if you don't pay that extra money right you're gonna have to wait all the way until the weekday to play or if you have a normal job you're gonna have to wait until the following weekend so it's even worse than most early access things 
Uh, I absolutely despise it. It doesn't matter if ladder's not out. If you're paying for a game, especially the, the what is it, sixty nine dollars or something, seventy nine dollars for the base game, you should everyone should be able to start at the same exact time. There should be no like four day head start. I actually just I I dislike it. I can't I can't say how much I dislike it. I really despise it. I I hope they just remove that early access junk. Yeah, no, absolutely. Is it Keisha? I mean, I didn't even know about that, but I mean, we have time. So like with the, between now and then get a job, you fucking bums. <laughs> get, the, get the fucking good deluxe one so you can get in there. You know what I'm saying? Go most of once, you know, springtime's right around the corner. I'm just kidding. Like, I, I really hate the like early. Like today, today's a good example. Everyone, I bought fucking Resident Evil 4, like the fucking deluxe one. I can't play it until fucking tomorrow. There's like three or four hundred people <laughs> fucking streaming the goddamn thing right now. Anyway, I think it's kind of dumb. Yeah. All the early access, I feel like with any game, I know I've had a lot of, you know, benefits of playing things like kind of early access or special ones or whatever, but I feel like when a new game comes out like launch day, like everybody should be able to play it at the exact same fucking time, too. Yep. I don't know why the developers think like, oh, well, it's midnight in Australia, so everyone's going to be asleep in the United States. Like, the motherfucker, we play video games. Like, people take time off for this shit. Yep. So I feel like everybody should be able to play at the same exact fucking time. Okay. Regardless. I agree. Yeah. I think I think day one experience is it's not so much about getting in and playing. It's about getting together with your friends and having like, you know, that social experience of everyone just playing at the same time. Yeah. I think it's so important. And it's like it's it's the thing that they're essentially saying, nah, that's not important. That's not part of it. Especially when they like make they, they make this big like so much PR, everyone come play and all of this like release on the like six six twenty three all that big date. I was like, nah, it's actually not. That is just like I don't know. Yeah, no, for sure. It's also just there's something demoralizing. At least for me, this might not apply to everybody. But if I like log into a game, say I start four days late. And I'm like, I'm really excited to play. Suddenly I see some guy like fucking max level already. They've already explored yeah. everything. It does take the wind out of my sails a little bit. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's In a big I multiplayer think. game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Open world where like you're not going to be able to like ignore these people running around. You won't be able to like yeah. turn it off. Is, is there going to be a way to fucking turn off, you know, uh, interacting mm -hmm. with other people all the time? That's another question too, because there are people yeah. going to be doing weird shit like you know sometimes because people are definitely if there's a way for people to grief it's going to happen for sure absolutely so that's a question does anyone know the answer that mods you were like your roommate of fucking blizzard rep or something what's, <laughs> what's going on no. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the answer no, no yeah, i don't know the answer either i would assume yeah. no i would assume no but yeah i figured as the as the last question Keisha, how was your how was your experience? Did you have fun over the weekend? Like that's the that's the main question. Did you have fun? It was a lot of fun. I had I had a great time. I think the worst part of the whole weekend was just an answering whether or not people should buy the fucking game. Because like mm. I'm not the person to ask. Even when I was the brokest <laughs> motherfucker you ever knew, I was like, okay, new sixty dollar game. If I get this game, I'll save money because I won't be out spending money on food <laughs> or fucking alcohol. So it was like it was like a you know it was a way to save money for me. I just stayed locked in 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 my dungeon for a month or two at a time. So, oh for yeah, sure, I had a great time. That month, uh, I actually had a lot of fun this weekend. You could tell like the base game is there, you know, like the graphics and the ambiance and everything else. They just need to work on some systems, and we need to see how end game plays out. But they definitely have to make a lot of adjustments to some stuff. But overall, just like, yeah, the combat and stuff, it was fun. Like, when I went to bed and I woke up in the morning, I just wanted to play some more. I wanted to try some more. I wanted to experiment with some more stuff. I wanted to try to make some more builds. Um, yeah, I just hope that the end game is not lackluster and it does have that replayability uh, that we seek in ARPGs. Absolutely. Okay. Uh Yeah, had a great time as well. Uh, I think uh, one thing that really stood out to me was just how good the campaign is. I've been waiting for a good Diablo campaign and a story that I'm involved in. I know it doesn't mean that much to everyone, but I've watched the uh, some of those early cinematics in the church like eight times during the weekend just because every time I get there on a new character, sure, I'll watch it because I enjoy it. So They're whatever... So yeah. 
Like, it's the same thing with Diablo 2, right? Whenever I go through Diablo 2, I'll watch every video again every time, even though it's like 20 years later. It's part of the game, and I really like the, uh, that they made uh, something good there. So that's nice. Um, I think the the depth of the game seems to be better than I thought it would be, at least from a character customization point of view. End game, we'll see. Nice. So for me, as somebody who like despises Diablo 3, I give it a 1 out of 10 of the current iteration, which is mostly because <laughs> I loved it so much at launch, so it just feels like almost a betrayal of what it was. Uh, I always go into new games with no expectations. That's actually a lie because I went into the hope of having a move only and I obviously got disappointed there, but I had a great time. I, I go in with I like, no expectations and I had a really good time. It was just really, really enjoyable to play. A lot of the skills felt really crunchy. I will like, probably never forget the time where I first used penetrating shot with, I just found like a new legendary that made it split off. And I did whatever the purple imbuement was called and everything exploded. And I was like, oh, that is that is a good feeling. And I knew I was going to have fun with this game. So as long as they, at least for me, can nail itemization, I can see myself easily playing every single launch. I had a lot of fun. And yeah, expectations is everything. If you're, if you're expecting this to be like a rival to play PoE and complexity and stuff, you're going to have a rough time. But, because that's yeah. not what it is. It's, it's more of a hack and slash. Yeah, I don't know why people just keep on trying to turn Diablo into PUE because just like mm. PUE do PUE does yeah. PUE better than it's gonna Diablo's ever gonna do it. Totally different demographics. That's all that's a, probably you guys probably saw it in your chat because you're mainly PUE players. Everyone's just trying to turn Diablo 4 into PUE. There's PUE yeah. T coming out, so if you want to play PUE, you can play that <laughs> and let Diablo do its own thing. Absolutely. For sure. How long yeah. do you think it's gonna take before we get to endgame? and where it starts to feel stale i think getting to end game on the first character i i'm completely guessing because people said like the level 25 thing was faster than normal so if that is true i would expect between 20 to 30 hours to get to the end game maybe 40 it obviously depends on your speed but that's like i i would expect that i'd be taking around like 20 hours I think Something probably, like I think, I think 20 is probably, I think 30 if you're not skipping cutscenes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause like that, that's going to pay, like play a lot into it. Like, are you watching everything? Are yeah. you listening to everything? Are you skipping every, or, you know, that'll actually take, so yeah. Absolutely. Really 20 hours to get the end game? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the campaign is set to be like 30, 40, like some 35, I think it's said to be. So if you're mm -hmm. going through 30 or 20, that's fast because you're still going through the campaign. Yeah, 35 though just, does sound like I am doing every side quest kind of thing. Right. Are you, are, are you all starting softcore or are you I'm starting hardcore? hardcore. Hardcore. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, so maybe a little <laughs> yeah, longer sure. than 20 or 30 <laughs> hours then. Right? Uh, maybe. Sure maybe. Get some it, curveballs in there. it does not strike me as a super hardcore friendly game, I will say. Right. Uh, there's definitely, I, I think it's, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I think the stun locks from either fr uh, freezes. Or the chain like dad mods got fucking wrecked by the 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 revenant uh slurp or whatever where you're incapacitated. I feel like those stuns are gonna be the biggest killers in this fucking game. Either yeah, the, yeah. the freeze or just the the overhead stuns from like the goat dudes. Yeah. Big if I could have add, like unstoppable on like two or three skills in hardcore. Yeah, but like, you know, you you can't really depend on them too, because there's also an internal cooldown for unstoppable, I, I yeah. think. That's probably your biggest safety check though. Yeah. That's also why I kind of hate, as a hardcore player, I hate the scaling, right? Because on hardcore, a, a solid strat is often over-level the content. Take your time, be careful, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Like, well, now they're, that's gonna, it's going to catch up with me no matter what. I can't escape. Okay, question here, sis. Did you play on Torment 2? Yeah, of course. Then play on Torment 1. There you go, solved. <laughs> nice. I'm serious. I'm actually serious. Because the, the people who are saying, like, yeah. oh, I can't, I can't play, I can't progress it's too hard especially for hardcore it's 20 percent more xp if you're killing faster you're getting 20 percent xp back so like torment one D don't be an elitist or an idiot just just scale it down if it's that hard sure yeah Dude, I, okay hey, can i say something real quick i know you guys want to ramp up the <laughs> i just really enjoy hanging out with you guys That's good. i posted the video of me face tanking the butcher right my like the second time i saw him and i, I face tanking the butcher 
he's wrecking me. He's almost one shot me. And I end up finally killing him. Right. And then somebody, somebody on Twitter, some fucking streamer, like posted a response of them. Uh, like they're like, Oh, you look pretty squishy, bud. Anyway, this is how a real, you know, this is how a real guy does it. And he shows like on his barb doing it. And then I didn't hear, I was like, Oh, what the fuck, man? What anyway, somebody post, like he was playing on the, the, the world tier one difficulty. He wasn't playing on the fucking better. Somebody posted, because you know, it has the little like, one or the two up at the top, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out, like, you know, someone's like, you're playing on the noob setting, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, Talk about hardcore. What do you guys feel about Source having, uh, like, one of the only cheat deaths in the game? I hate cheat deaths. It seems like, it, it seems, it seems like, it seems yeah. like Source is going to be, like, the go-to uh, starter yeah. character for hardcore, at least for, the, uh, at least for the initial start, right, to, like, farm your gear and stuff, maybe? It's kind of like Diablo 2, right? Everyone starts Source, farms your gear. Get some base items, then re-rolls. Um, I I really, really hate the cheat death mechanics because what it ends up doing is it kills all of hardcore. Uh that's what it does in D3. However, with Diablo 4 having logout macro through the cheat uh no, what's it called? The scroll of escape. Scroll of I escape. think that's a really yeah. good way of doing it. Where yeah. you can click your scroll of escape, you're instantly gone. And apparently, if you disconnect, a scroll of escape is instantly used for you. Um, oh, really? Oh, really? That's what people have been saying. So if that wow. is true, that is a very I, good way to do it. I don't know about that. I wouldn't I wouldn't trust that unless you have video proof cuz like, yeah, anytime anyone else is disconnected, like my like uh, my buddy Anthony who I was playing with, he had scrolls of escape. I know he did cuz like I showed him like how to customize to bind it onto the wheel and he fucking got disconnected a couple times and his character just stood there and was getting okay. hit the whole Okay. Oh, that's not good. Uh, well, that, a dev yeah. said that was going to happen. Uh, okay, well, I'm just saying, I wouldn't trust that fucking shit. <laughs> Put it on I, I wouldn't trust it either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, in theory, that sounds really nice. Yeah. At least. Okay. In theory, you fucking yeah, rip hardcore character. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, that was pretty fun, though. I enjoyed that. We actually went oh, more thing. a lot over too, huh? <laughs> Wait, can, can, can the devs put in a basic loot filter too, please? Oh my goodness. True. Yeah, just filter out like white or blue. That would be nice. Yeah, oh. just put in the last epoch filter, like where you just like you just open up a menu, you just collect what affix you want to change. Like even like I don't know if you guys felt it when you were speed farming dungeons, I would have I would get more than one inventory full of stuff just with dead stats, and I'm just like, okay, I just want the materials. Yeah. And then at a certain point, once your character got progressed, I was like, oh, I only want certain affix stuff to get upgrades. Uh, right. I want like a yeah better loot filter. Here is another yeah. thing they could do. Show the item sets when you hover over them on the ground so yes. you don't even have to put them in your inventory. Absolutely. They, they have like a basic one right now where you disable like white and blue. That meant for filtering attributes on like yellows and legendaries and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want just like, oh, just turn off. Who's, who's picking up blues and whites anyways when you're speed farming? I was picking up rares, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I feel the thing that does suck is the whites and blues. There's literally no way to make those items useful, and they're only vendor trash. They're good vendor trash. They still sell for a lot of a lot of gold, right. but um, yeah, there's mm -hmm. no way to augment them into well, at least for now. Hopefully, there's more for crafting. There's more vendors that can do stuff like that in this so, town. So or, that's in that's in my opinion the fix for rune words, uh, because in my opinion the problem oh. the problem with rune words is that they kind of just become build your own or build the exact same unique as everybody else and they just end up being unique shards basically the same as path of exile's harbinger and they don't end up being that exciting really like they're obviously always got very powerful items like enigma but your enigma looks the same as my enigma what makes that different is more interesting base types like what if you have like for example diablo 2 with um the way staves worked there are a lot more interesting rune words. Like your leaf won't be the same as my leaf, right? So that is what I would like to see them do with rune words when they do actually put them in. Do you know they're putting them in? Yes, they uh, they were going to have rune words. It was going to be a kind of basic system that I think would have still been okay for the game, just shouldn't have been called rune words. And they've said they're taking rune words out of the game because they got a lot of backlash on it, and they're going to put it in a later when they've been able to make a better version. Basically, it's because they don't want to change what people expect. Like, people expect a rune word to be a certain thing. So whenever they put something called rune words into it, it'll function similarly to that. So they, they didn't have a system that did that. So that's why they scrapped yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. I personally didn't like rune words. 
because I felt like <laughs> they were really strong, almost like set pieces. Because everyone's like, well, yeah. you know, Diablo 2, a lot of people had like the same fucking three rune words that they were rocking all the time, but it kind of. Yeah. I mean, what is just a unique, no? Piece. Yeah, it's just yeah. a unique. It just becomes a little bit homogenized, and they were too strong. Right. So I, I see that. Yeah. That's why I think bases could make it very interesting, like special bases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. All right, let's wrap it up there. Uh, we'll have everybody do a little shout out at the end. Sakisha, where can people find more of your content and your glorious mustache? <laughs> so, Quisha on everything. That's, that's easy. It. Just like we show. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy. Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Twitch. Awesome. Dat mods. Yeah, same thing. Does dat mods everywhere? Besides on Instagram, someone stole my name. They try to sell it to me for money. So I'm just the real <laughs> dat mods on Instagram, and uh, I never post there. So don't even follow me on Instagram. That's fair. But yeah, don't even follow me on Twitter and Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nugi. Uh, Noogie Yen on uh, on everywhere uh, except also Instagram. Or I'm just real Noogie, but I, again, I don't post do there know? either. How do we know that you're real? <laughs> I, I because I told you so. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. All right, same for me. I'm just Zizarin on everything. Hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast, and I hope everybody listening has an amazing time this weekend. So thanks for watching.